This is Ryan Abraham, Chris Gervinho, uscfootball.com. Instant analysis from inside Heritage Hall, January 10th. No football games or anything going on, Chris, but we had a very unique experience today. We got to uh, have just the local media members uh, sit down with Lincoln Riley that wasn't sure. I thought it could be 15, 20 minutes. It ended up being two hours long. Uh, he was very forthcoming. I think shared a lot of information about what he felt that you know happened in year one of the program and what the expectations are going forward, changes they need to make, uh, things that they need to address, uh, all of that. But it was a really interesting talk. And I don't know if we've had something like this for a while. I think I was the only media member in there that was around when uh, Lane Kiffin did sort of one of these, which was a little more X's and O's. And I t- told Lincoln right of that. He's like, you're not going to get any of that. So, but he did, he was very forthcoming a lot of what kind of was going on uh, in the program. And it was uh, really informative. We we took a lot of notes. We recorded it. We No video from it. We recorded it. We'll have a bunch of stories going up on uscfootball.com, but because we were doing this, we wanted to do an instant analysis video. And the main thing coming out of it, and we want to get your initial thoughts anyway, but the main thing is that the staff was going to be retained. Uh, Alex Grinch, the defensive coordinator, that a lot of USC fans wanted to see uh, not around the program anymore, will be around the program. He's going to be retained. Um, so just kind of get your thoughts on that and just overall, like what was what we what we were doing here in Heritage Hall the last couple hours. Yeah, if you listen to that, that's everyone watching this slamming their <laughs> their their computers or they're turning this off. Yes, Alex Grinch will be retained. And he didn't even come out and say it like that. It was just something that he knew in his mind. He didn't have to say Alex is staying. The way he talked, the way he asserted that next season that Alex Grinch is the one that he wants leading the defense. And he also said that he does not expect any major staff changes barring anyone going and getting a head coaching job or maybe a defensive coordinator offensive coordinator position at another staff so for the most part everything is going to remain intact specifically alex grinch and obviously people are mad right now (laughs) we put it out on twitter everyone's freaking out and in the end got miller moss walking by (laughs) there shout out to miller moss in the end that is lincoln riley's decision to make and only his decision to make and you know he spoke about you know, I know you're asking, why is Alex Grinch being retained? And one of the points he made is that, you know, he has seen Alex Grinch be the central figure, part of a program in a defense, turning things around. You know, he also hit on something that he was asked early in the season about roster turnover, or not roster turnover, roster improvement. That was something he said after the Utah loss, which is this roster needs to get better. And that's something he really, really hit on, even more so than he did in that press conference in this two-hour press conference. We'll dive into a little bit more. But he also stressed continuity you know having continuity for the staff for this program and for this players moving forward into year two you don't want to have to scrap everything and make a new you can bring in a new assistance new scheme you know he wants that continuity for the program moving forward and you get that by keeping alex grinch around so you know he did he wasn't you know shy about saying that things need to get better they need to get better players need to play better a lot of things need to get better but he was firm in his belief and his confidence in Alex Grinch and this defensive scheme. You know, he did mention that sometimes when you, you know, you play for the continuity that sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes there's a disconnect and it doesn't work. And in this business, it's tough, but you have to make the call to change it. But he said, that's not how I feel right now. That is not how I feel right now. I have all the confidence in Alex Grinch and is in, in this defense and the staff moving forward. So that's what Lincoln Riley's decision. He's you know, essentially kind of doubling down on Alex Grinch in this moment, in this decision. So, yeah, there it is. Yeah, and I think just listening to him, I felt really confident. And I, I, we've, we're we going to be really honest with you guys. We're not going to sugarcoat things and just say things you want to hear. But I didn't come out of there going, wow, they're doomed. Like, I just really felt like he's, I mean, he's a way smarter football guy than either of us, obviously. And he knows what he's talking about. And I, you know, it. He's not going to be hesitant to make a change if he feels it needs to be made. And I think the one example he gave was when Sark got to Texas and they bring in uh, Pete K- Kowarkowski, I forget his name. Uh, from Washington. Yeah, from Washington. who's was a very well thought of defensive coordinator. They struggle, struggle bust in year one. And then in year two, they're a top 20 defense. And the confidence he had on this team going from, uh, you know, where they are now, which is, you know, he didn't want to, he, he was at, it wasn't he was emphasizing, but he didn't want to gloss over the fact that they went from four and eight to eleven and three. It's a huge improvement. Everything that they had to do in this building when he got here, there were so many things he had to change. But his confidence that they're going to be much improved 
in year two and he's going to be part of that where maybe he said one of the things he said was you know you get here this time last year and you're trying to figure out how to fit three people into this office because we don't have enough room and now this year it's more about how we make the defense better and so he has his head coaching duties and he's got wears a lot of hats but a lot of it was kind of logistic stuff infrastructure stuff that he had to do when he first got here so the thing one of the biggest takeaways i got away not just for the alex Rin stuff was how confident he was that you're going to see a lot of improvement in year two yeah that confidence came out really strong with him like you said and you know it was a very intimate setting there was only i believe eight reporters in there you know his guard seemed a little bit down he's very forthcoming he's cracking jokes he's being really (laughs) you know uh personable and and such you know sometimes he can be a little short and standing up there in press conference but he's you know seemed like he was in a really good mood and he was talking about that confidence and when you're one of the best coaches in college football and any coach in general you have to have that confidence you know no one's going up there and saying well, we might be bad next year, but no, he had that belief in himself. And that's all you can do in this situation when you're you're moving forward with this. He has the confidence in his defense. He has his confidence in Alex Grinch. He has that confidence in that offense. We know that. And he has his confidence that the defense is going to make huge sh- improvements in 2023. He, he said as much. He, he believes that this is, defense is, you're going to see huge improvements based on, you know, more another year in the system, getting better players in, and he kind of hinted at some incoming players on the defensive front that is going to help a lot. Yeah. But he just was so confident in what what they're doing and their mission, and that's all he can do right now is 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 stick to the plan, be confident in the plan, and execute the plan. Yeah, he was at the national championship game last night. Obviously, his brother, the offensive coordinator for TCU, and he said, you know, you look at the players, and it's like our guys don't look like that. And he said yet, and I think. There was just one of those things where it's, you know, you remember after the the conference championship game, the Pac-12 championship game, he kind of talked about guys being in the right spots, but then not making the play. We didn't really hear that after the the Cotton Bowl, but we heard a little bit more of that today. And he said, watching the tape, it was like guys were there and there was runs that should have been a one yard run that turned into these big plays. So I feel like he felt that was confident. It's not just the players it's like they need to develop the players better they need to make sure that they're in a better position and they know what to do and all that so I think he said everyone has to get better but he really talked about multiple times the underbelly of this team and by the end of the year even a guy like Tuli Tui Pelotu wasn't going to be 100% they relied on him so much so getting this roster into a better spot and how much it improved from what he took over. He said, if you just look at the roster from 12 months ago, how different it is, and then how much it's going to get even better going forward. So this is not a, a one thing that you're going to fire one coach and things are going to get better. I mean, he's looking at this as fixing a whole lot of things and they had to do so much in year one. And he feels like now there's more he can focus on in year two. It's not just the moving into the building and figuring out where everyone has to go. So much was wrong. And he fixed a lot of that. And now there's a lot of things I think you can focus on, you know, with a team aspect going forward. Yeah, it's like he they bought this fixer upper house. You know, the 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 thing was on fire. The plumbing was just shooting (laughs) everywhere. You know, there's nails coming out of the floorboards. They took care of the, you know, the major stuff, you know, get the electrical right. Get the get the thing up to code. Now it's up to code still looks a little ugly at times you know yeah. there's some nice things you know they put in a nice veranda there's there's some things you like <laughs> with the house but now you can fine tune some of that stuff fix the big things we got to fix the upstairs we got to fix the defense and that's sort of going to be the big emphasis and he did say as much where i'm not a person that is going to make a rash decision and yeah. i know every usc fan was making a rash decision after the Tulane game which fair enough it was a brutal loss and you know usc 99.8 chance to win and then they just crap the bed at the end the defense crap the bed at the end and all those little things piled up into one big cataclysmic meltdown for them so obviously fans not rational all the time so they were the ones being that making that rash decision of being like fire and fire and fire but lincoln riley said i'm not an emotional guy like that i don't make my decisions based on emotions like that i'm not going to make a rash decision and he said that in the press conference where they were going to go back take a time look at it And he mentioned that these last seven days, they've really had the time to take a step back and breathe. Like you mentioned, you know, figuring out who's going to go in what office, you know, (laughs) all these little things. Because since he's arrived, it's been go, 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 go. Put your head down and just get through it and and progress and see where you're in at the end, where you are at the end and where they're where they are at the end is 11 and three. A lot of work on defense. And these past seven days, he's been able to sit down with the staff and they've really been able to sit back, take a step back and kind of look at what they did well, what they didn't do well, what they really need to prove on, 
what can be better so these last seven days have been you know breath of fresh air just being able to catch their breath and kind of look at things and that's kind of the the lens he was coming into this this talk with us is just having looked at all that and having seen things and I think a lot of that is where his confidence is coming from just looking at it finally able to sit down and look at it under a microscope and be like hey maybe it wasn't as bad as we thought maybe it wasn't as good as we thought but we know what we need to do to get better moving forward yeah and we talked about that underbelly of talent that he said you know it's it's really the depth on the team is when you get worn down you get a few injuries at the end of the year are there some guys to come in and take that spot and one of the aspects where you can get better at he said was on special teams and he kind of went through every aspect of it and thought the field goal kicking pats was pretty good you know Dennis Lynch hit some big kicks and um, you know, they missed some, but he said he messed up, made some that he probably you know, shouldn't have made. And, you know, punt, there was definitely some issues there, and they're going to try to address that a little bit. The biggest one was, you know, the kickoff return, um, just trying, you know, they want, he want, well, he wants more kickoff touch, touchbacks. He said, we're, we're feeling, we're having to cover too many kicks, but on the, the worst, the worst aspect was the kickoff return stuff. But, you know, at the end of the day, for him, it was more about that kind of underbelly of talent and getting more of that and that's going to help but no you know he didn't say anything about hiring a special teams coordinator he's going to keep the staff the same so i think they're going to keep going forward with that but certainly pointed out some aspects on special teams that he wants to see improvement on and just pointing to that underbelly of talent quote that he mentioned a couple times you know he specifically mentioned like throughout the course of a season you have guys younger guys that you're developing throughout the course of the year you know guys on scout team guys in practice that just step up you know, like he mentioned, you know, Damani Jackson, you know, with being hurt, they didn't have Zion Branch, Zion Branch with that knee injury. He was obviously somebody that could have really come on strong at the end of the year. Romello Height, they lost him early in the year. They didn't have these guys that would, you know, hope you would hope that would emerge by the end of the season, you know, on a steady incline. And then by the back half of the season, they're making plays all over the field. They didn't really have that. You know, they didn't really have a big recruiting class for 2022. It's, it's a different story for 2023, which he was very excited about. Yeah. Uh, and he, he compared those two a lot. But they didn't have a lot of guys that could impact them defensively on the staff. Zion Branch being the one had the best chance, but had that knee injury in the summer workout. So they were on a bad foot in that regard. So they didn't really have that depth, as he mentioned, guys getting worn down, guys getting, you know, uh, the durability aspect and you know guys were running on empty at times you know because they had to use some of their top guys over and over and over and they didn't really have that depth to play with moving forward and when you're going up against those better teams at the end of the season you best on best you need your guys to step up and they just didn't have that enough they didn't have that in the tank to get through it so you're really hoping to develop more depth develop more guys that can help in special teams. He mentioned that that'll be a big reason that you'll see an improvement in special teams is developing that underbelly of talent and guys that can contribute in those fields, specifically defense and special teams. Yeah, one of my favorite stories, and not just because I asked this question, but he, I mean, he answered a lot of questions, but uh, I asked him about, hey, speaking of the underbelly of talent, like a guy like a Rajon Davis, who is a fan favorite, uh, highly ranked recruit from a big time high school, local high school, didn't see him much all year. And then he plays well in the Cotton Bowl. And you know, Lincoln Riley talked about that he did progress rest during those bowl practices could they have got him on the field sooner he was like yeah probably you know he was very he, like i make mistakes all the time like he admits to making mistakes and that could have been one of them but the thing that i thought was really interesting was he said we don't want you know if what we tell all the guys is don't make us make a 50 50 decision because we can get those wrong half of the time and you make it clear like don't make it clear that i'm going to be the guy that's playing he's like you know i make dumb decisions like i'm gonna play caleb williams like i'm gonna play tuli tui Pelota. like i'm not that dumb but if you give a 50 50 decision you're giving yourself a chance it's like letting a referee kind of decide a game it was something like that like make it clear and uh apparently rajon davis wasn't really making it all that clear but he sounded like he was willing you know he, they could have played him more because he liked the way the kind of you know he was tackling well in that game and it, so it was kind of an interesting answer i thought yeah i think that's a great message and it was a funny story and to hear him say it you know <laughs> big laugh in the room you know i'm not going to be a dummy and not play caleb williams just and it's an important lesson for you know football players you know young football players make it clear make it undisputable that you deserve to be the starter if you're going out there and busting your butt every day and you're making all the plays in practice they're gonna play you it's not it's not it's not gonna be disputed it's like coach we have to play x at this position he's just beating everyone you know yeah. and some of the guys you know, maybe they were 50-50 most of the year, and they don't want that. You know, at Georgia, those guys are all 100% if they're out there. There's not a lot of 50-50 guys. So that's where the next level of the program is, is just getting that competition level where everyone is raising their level of play in practice and in scrimmages and all that kind of things, and just make it so guys are stepping up to the point where you cannot 
dispute who were your number one guys. And, you know, Rajon Davis is a great example. You know, we saw him playing more and more in that game in the Cotton Bowl, and he had a great month of practice leading up to that. You know, he was not one of those guys we had heard about that didn't get into the game, but I think Rajon Davis, you know, doing some good things moving to 2023, and there's a bunch of guys that could that could be – those impact players next season, you know, Devin Tompkins, the freshman defensive lineman is the guy he mentioned took a red shirt year and good luck getting any stock in Devin Tompkins. Cause I bought all the stock on summer <laughs> when I saw him on campus. So if you're coming for Devin Tompkins stock. You got to come to me. Cause I bought it all up. Nice. <laughs> um, it wasn't just defense and special teams talk. There was some offensive talk too. It wasn't perfect, but obviously the offense was, was really good. And one of the questions was about, Hey, this is the first time you're, you know, he's coached a bunch of highs and winners. First time you got one coming back and he was really, he said, this is going to be a lot of fun really excited uh, to do that but you know thinks that Caleb Williams made a lot of strides uh, in his first year as like the full-time starter but there's a lot of things he could improve on as well right and just because you won the Heisman does not mean you are a perfect player that you know everything there's so much on the bone for them to grow and develop and that's kind of what was his message and remember Caleb Williams only a sophomore he is still a very very young quarterback so that leap from sophomore to junior could be incredible. You know, he is already going to be touted as the potential number one overall pick. That is a lot of pressure to handle for such a young uh, student athlete. But as we've seen, he has handled that pressure time and time again. So that's going to be a really interesting storyline going into the season. Uh, first year back with another Heisman winner. He, and he said, it's going to be fun. He kind of leaned back and he laughed and had a big smile. It's like, it's going to be fun. So I think we're in store for a lot more plays uh, with number 13 and Lincoln Riley. For sure. And I think one of the things that was really nice about this is because when he came in, we weren't sure how open they were going to be. It's a very different media market when you're in Norman, Oklahoma versus Los Angeles. And I asked him kind of about how it's worked for it. And he thought it did. And one of the aspects of, you know, his as a as a young coach with young children live you know being in the spotlight he's you know he's like don't feel bad for me make a lot of money you get to do a lot of fun stuff but i think it just he really enjoyed being in this market where you can go to the grocery store you can go around and people you know don't know who you are they're looking for george clooney they're not looking for the usc football coach now some people will where you are george clooney if you're in a small college town and just the quality of life and the and, and something with, you know, and the, another question was asked about the, you know, having Dave Nickel pass away and, and Mike Leach, people they were close to, really making sure that your people, that it's his responsibility to make sure that they have, you know, mental health is okay and that they have lives outside of this building. And uh, maybe U.S. fans don't want to hear that, but I think just the quality of life aspect of it was something that he seemed to be kind of focused on and enjoying. And you're going to work really hard and do all that stuff, but really try to make sure his people are in the right place. And being in LA is like there's a lot of advantages to it. He talked about that in recruiting and, and the academics and things, but not being like as a big of a spotlight with someone he's he admitted doesn't really like the spotlight was a, a positive aspect for him. Yeah, I'm sure it felt like not necessarily like living in a fishbowl where yeah. sort of everyone's kind of watching you when you're kind of in those big time programs that are maybe in a, in a smaller market and a smaller community where everything is kind of you're the you're the biggest celebrity out yeah. there and so in LA you can the ecosystem is so big it doesn't really matter who you are how famous like you are. Caleb Williams would be the biggest star in many yeah. s- states where he's I don't know is he top 10 in Los Angeles right now I mean there's no LeBron James or you know Matthew Stafford like they don't have guys like that in these other towns it's Caleb Williams and his teammates being able to go to like horror, horror Halloween horror nights at Universal and you know not being probably mobbed by a, a giant because Justin Bieber's there with his girlfriend or something like that, that that's kind of what the the examples were or I'm giving is this the ecosystem is so big and he can kind of breathe a little bit and not and just that and you could just tell by the way he was talking like that not burden, but like that relief of just being able to have a little more normal life in LA was like incredible to him. And it's something he's very grateful for. Yeah. Cause I think you're worried about your family and that's something that's like one less worry. You don't have to worry about your family, little kids where you would in another aspect. But he definitely said it wasn't about the living, you know, he loved living in all these other places. It's just, there's something kind of unique about here where you aren't as big of a celebrity or as big of a deal just because there's a lot of other things. Uh, kind of going on and I can relate to that my garbage man re- recognized me the other day so it's like this is too much for me so I, I can understand Lincoln I, I get where you're coming from but this was over I mean we're gonna get a, some final thoughts for you but just overall I thought this was really informed I can't believe that we were talking for two hours um, I just thought it, you know it was very forthcoming and I definitely came away feeling confident that he's got this program going in the right uh, direction that they're addressing a lot of the problems that you've seen on this team, uh, you know, it, the fact that they were able to win 11 games, I think they all are, are, you know, 
very proud of that, but know that there's so much more kind of work to do. But any other kind of final thoughts, Chris, going into this one? I'll try to leave it on some sort of positive notes. And one of those is being recruiting and that there are a lot of, you know, talk of the kind of the transfer portal guys that they're bringing in. And remember, like last season, the transfer class, while number one in the country, surely based on uh, some talented players, but there's all the guys they were taking off teams that weren't necessarily starters. And some of those guys were maybe, you know, second string, hadn't played a lot unproven because they kind of just needed bodies to fill out this roster. Yeah. And this year with the defensive talent they're bringing, specifically on defense, they're taking starters away. They're talking high-end quality starters. So you're seeing the difference in the level of guys that they're getting. And Lincoln Riley hinted that, you know, there should be some more defensive front guys. Specifically, he said defensive front guys that should be announced soon. So wink, wink, you know, I think a lot more reinforcements are coming. And I think a lot more excitement will be around the players that they're getting on the defensive side of the ball. I know you're probably not happy about Alex Grinch being retained. That's your, that's your, that's your issue right now. But there will be more talent coming into this team. There is more talent that have already been brought in with this high school class and some of the guys they've already got, Mason Cobb, Kyron, Kyron Bars, uh, Christian Roland Wallace, you know, Jack Sullivan, they just announced. So guys are coming in to help higher level quality guys across the board. And yeah, the, the final thing is, you know, going back to what we started with, which is Alice Grinch. And I know I made the joke about, you know, people turning off the, the computer or throwing the computer out the window, whatever, you know, I know you're upset and I know you're, that's not what you wanted to hear today. And, but again, like I said, it's, it's Lincoln Riley's decision. And all you can do as a fan is just accept that Lincoln Riley is one of the best coaches in college football and he is confident in this plan and you have to roll with it. You know, you're going to, you're going to bitch and moan on social media (laughs) and on the peristyle and that's for us to deal with. But in, in the long run, it's his decision and it's his move and you have to sort of accept that. And I think you also just try to take a step back and realize that Lincoln Riley is one of the best coaches in college football. You know, this isn't a former coach that I'm not going to name here to make you even more mad. This isn't like one of his decisions to be like, no, we're going with, uh, we're sticking with our co- defensive coordinator, you know, we're sticking with a Todd Orlando or whatever that case may be. This is Lincoln Riley. You know, this isn't uh a different coach this is so I think I think he's earned a little bit more trust to be able to look at it and say this is what I want to do this is the direction we're going to move in you will not be happy with the decision I know you're not happy with the decision but it is his decision to make not yours not ours not anyone in this world it's Lincoln Riley's and that's the decision he has made so got to ride with it yeah and I think I agree with that Chris and uh, one of the quotes he had was you can't fake the front seven you know I think they're going to address a lot of the personnel stuff in this offseason and I would think feel confident if you really wanted a defensive coordinator change obviously that's not happening but from what he was saying if there's if they feel like they need to make one it's not going to go on for a long time either so if it if it doesn't work he feels it can work in year two and if it doesn't for whatever reason they will make a change so I think you can feel confident in that but I agree with Chris and um, you know Lincoln Riley's forgot more about football than I'll ever know. And you just kind of have to roll with the, he's done some amazing work. And I think we saw the same sort of thing when like Mike Bone and Brandon Sosna came in, there were so many things wrong in the athletic department. You didn't like every decision right away, but eventually you did and they got it right. And they, they made the changes you need to make and they end up hiring Lincoln Riley. I think there's some similar path there where they fixed so much and you saw the results on the field going, you know, winning 11 games and being this close to a championship. And now can you do that in year two? Do you, do you think he did a good job? I kind of would, you know, as a fan, you feel however you want, but I would roll with it and go, yeah, I think well, I'm going to trust him when he see what he, what he does in year two. But I will say this move, while it is a double-edged sword, because yes, it is his decision, but also the pressure is on now. The pressure is on Alex Ranch and the staff to turn it around. You know, there's yeah. so much confidence. If you double down, you better have the confidence to, to back it up. So there will be a big sense of urgency with the staff in the off season. You know, they're, they're getting some good players to add to this defense. So we'll see what it looks like next season. You know, I feel good about it trending in a better direction, but again, the pressure is on for Alex Grinch and the staff and Lincoln Riley to an extent, because this is, the, this is his choice to move forward with. So we'll see that sense of urgency and what that looks like, you know, moving into January. And he said, they're starting winter workouts this whole month. They're not going to focus on football. It's just getting better physically. And that's the thing he wanted to, another thing he emphasized with Benny Wiley in this offseason program, they need some size gains. You know, when he first got here, he said our skinny guys are too skinny and our fat guys are too fat. There's still <laughs> some of that on this team, but he thinks they did a really good job initially, you know, with Benny Wiley and their nutritionist who was only here 
for started in the summer. So yeah. a long off season. I think we're going to see some more gains uh, on the strength side, durability side. So that's another thing that Lincoln Riley is looking forward to that, you know, should help defensively uh, and team wide. Yeah, a lot of improvements coming uh, for USC football fans. You've seen a lot already. So uh, I would just expect more. It was overall just it was a great conversation and really appreciate the time that Lincoln Riley uh, shared with us. And, there, we, you know, usually we're talking to Lincoln Riley. We get the one, you know, one next question, you're like, you know, one more question. There wasn't any of that at all. They just kept going and going. I couldn't even believe how long it was going on. It was but. the opposite of the Tulane presser when we only got three questions to yeah. Lincoln. We got whatever we wanted to ask him. So, yeah. Yeah. Another defensive stud over here. Nice. Bryson Shaw, shout out. Yeah. Shout out to Bryson Shaw. We think it's a few players walking by. We saw a possum, a really wet possum That's not a uh, going by. It wasn't a player either, but we saw some funny stuff. But I'm just going to wrap it up. Uh, weird, uh, you know, a little different instant analysis because it was a press conference we didn't really expect. We just learned about this yesterday. Uh, a lot of stories and stuff coming up on uscfootball.com. We'll tweet about it. We'll post on uscfootball.com, the peristyle, and all that because we have two hours of quotes, essentially. We- barely scratched the surface yeah. with this so this is just a quick first-hand reaction but plenty of stories to be to come on uscfootball.com and on the peristyle yeah so make sure you check all that out for chris Trevino. i'm ryan abraham check out uscfootball.com for more